What if events went differently and two universes blurred, allowing characters from desperate worlds to collide? Imagine Homelander, the formidable and morally ambiguous superhero from The Boys, found himself in the heart of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What would happen if this powerhouse known for his ruthless methods and godlike abilities confronted the heroes and villains of the MCU? Picture Homelander standing amidst the ruins of a battle-scarred New York, his cold gaze meeting the defiant eyes of the Avengers. Would he align with the world's mightiest heroes to protect Earth, or would his presence ignite a catastrophic power struggle? challenging the very ideals that the, Avengers, that the Avengers strive to uphold. This scenario explores the dramatic unheal. This scenario explores the dramatic consequences of Homelander being in the MCU. And what do you think would happen with Homelander's arrival, testing the limits of alliances and the essence of heroism in the MCU? Welcome back, my fellow watchers of the multiverse, to another video. And this video was something that I really wanted to do for a very long time, considering that The Boys is a very hot thing right now, and I've always loved to do something like this. I've never done this on the channel before, it's probably my first Homelander video, so bear with me. But that being said, let's dive into the brand new What If episode. Homelander was in the middle of promoting his newest television show, America's Hero, Homelander Unleashed, with that signature smug smile on his face as he soaked in the love of the crowd. Cameras flashed, journalists vied for his attention, and fans screamed his name. Life was perfect, his ego swelled with every word of adoration. Suddenly, an alert rang in his ear. A direct communication from Vought. There was a disturbance nearby, and it wasn't just any disturbance, it was the boys. Homelander's face tightened. Looks like I've got to save the day again, he said with mock humility to the cameras, before blasting off into the sky, leaving chaos below as the media scrambled for the story. When he arrived, he saw them. Butcher, Huey, and the rest of the boys standing near what seemed to be a heavily armed truck. They were plotting something, most likely something, to disrupt Vought, or more likely, him. Homelander swooped down like a predator, his eyes glowing red, ready to blast Butcher into oblivion. Butcher, in typical fashion, smirked defiantly. You think you can stop me, Butcher? Homelander sneered. Without another word, he released a controlled burst of his laser vision, barely missing Butcher as he dodged. The rest of the boys scattered as the fight erupted. Butcher's team fired sonic disruptors, the sound waves disorienting Homelander for a moment, but not enough to slow him down. With a growl, he pushed through the sonic barrage, reaching Butcher in a heartbeat. But before he could finish him off, Butcher blasted a nearby communication tower with a rocket launcher, sending sparks and metal flying everywhere, cutting off Vought's monitoring. Homelander was enraged now, closing in to finish Butcher once and for all. But then, a rift. A strange swirling portal opened up right behind Butcher, its force pulling at everything in its proximity. Before Homelander could react, the portal surged and dragged him in, disorienting him with a mix of flashing lights and intense pressure. Then everything went dark. Homelander woke up to the sound of screaming. His ears rang as he sat up, trying to make sense of what was happening. He was in a city, but it wasn't any city he recognized. New York? He'd seen it before, but something was different. The skyline was familiar, but the chaos around him wasn't. 
Laser shots echoed in the air, and explosions rocked the ground. People were running in all directions, dodging falling debris and strange monstrous creatures flying above. He saw one of the Chitauri aliens swoop down, targeting a family trapped under a piece of debris. Instinctively, Homelander fired his laser vision, vaporizing the Chitari instantly. The family looked up at him, wide-eyed and grateful. They sobbed and thanked him profusely. Homelander felt a rush, a feeling he loved more than anything else. He'd saved them, and now they worshipped him. He looked at the scene unfolding around him, the chaos, the destruction. This universe needed a hero, no, it needed him. With his ego stroked, Homelander took to the skies, targeting the Chitauri with unrelenting force. His laser vision sliced through their ranks, and his fists obliterated anything in his path. Elsewhere. Captain America and Black Widow were battling their way through hordes of Chitauri, coordinating with the rest of the Avengers. Nick Fury's voice crackled in their earpieces. Cap, we've got reports of someone taking down Chitauri left and right in the south of the city. Could be an ally or maybe something else. You better check it out. The two exchanged glances. Another hero, perhaps or maybe someone more dangerous. They headed south, making their way through the queue to the debris-filled streets until they saw him. Homelander flying through the air, smashing through a massive Chitauri carrier with ease, sending it spiraling into the ground. That's new, Natasha muttered. When Homelander landed, Captain America approached cautiously, shield raised slightly. You're not from around here, are you? Cap asked. Homelander smirked. I'm from another universe, a better one, and I'm here to save you all. Cap and Natasha exchanged confused looks, but kept their guard up. We appreciate the help, Cap said, but this isn't a one-man job. Homelander's ego flared up again. He wasn't used to anyone telling him he couldn't do something on his own. But for now, he played along. The three fought their way through more Chitauri until they rejoined the rest of the Avengers. As they fought, Homelander saw something that made his blood boil. Thor, descending from the sky, lightning crackling from his hammer, wiping out dozens of Chitauri in one blast. Moments later, the Hulk leaped into the fray, smashing through alien invaders with reckless abandon. Homelander's fists clenched. Who were these heavy hitters? He was supposed to be the strongest, the most powerful. He growled under his breath and launched himself back into the fight, tearing through the Chitauri fleet with renewed fury. His laser eyes cut through their ships, and his fists shattered their armor. He wanted no, needed to be seen as the ultimate hero. Suddenly, a powerful blast from a Chitauri ship hit Homelander square in the chest, sending him crashing into Avengers Tower. Dazed, he staggered to his feet, shaking off the debris, and there stood Loki, grinning. You're not one of these earthly Avengers, are you? Loki sneered, circling Homelander with interest. Homelander frowned, his instincts on high alert. Who the hell are you? Loki's eyes gleamed. Someone who could help you become more than you are. Someone who knows power when he sees it. Homelander spotted Loki's scepter and was immediately drawn to it. As soon as he touched it, his mind was flooded with visions. Visions of him standing as the leader of the Avengers, a god among them ruling not just Earth, but the entire universe. The humans, Thor, even the Hulk, they would all bow to him. Loki smiled, watching as the Mind Stone subtly manipulated Homelander's already fragile ego. You could be a god here, Loki whispered. These humans, they are weak, pathetic creatures, but together we could rule them. Just as Homelander began to nod, Hulk crashed into the tower, sending debris flying. The sudden shock snapped Homelander out of his trance. 
and he watched as the Hulk effortlessly manhandled Loki, smashing him into the ground like a rag doll. Homelander's eyes narrowed. Loki was weak, and he almost fell for it. Once the Chitauri invasion was defeated, Homelander rejoined the Avengers, though something had shifted inside him. He met with Nick Fury and the rest of S.H.I.E.L.D., expecting them to recognize him as their leader. But to his shock, when the question of leadership came up, they named Iron Man as the leader of the Avengers. Homelander was fuming inside. How dare they? He had saved their city, destroyed their enemies, and yet they still chose Stark over him. His fists clenched, the urge to laser everyone in the room bubbling just below the surface. But then he remembered the vision, Loki's scepter. It had shown him his true destiny. He wasn't just meant to be a hero. He was meant to be a god, and yet, Homelander's fragile ego couldn't let the slight go unchallenged. Iron Man, he scoffed, his voice dripping with condescension. A man in a tin suit, you think he's stronger than me? Thor, watching from the side, narrowed his eyes. Strength isn't just about power, stranger, he said, stepping forward, his hammer twirling in his hand. It's about honor, something you seem to lack. Homelander sneered. Honor? I'm the only thing standing between your people and total destruction. You should be thanking me. Without warning, he shot up into the air, hovering just above the Avengers with his arms crossed, daring them to challenge him. Thor didn't hesitate. With a roar, he threw Mjolnir at Homelander with the full force of a god. Homelander, faster than most could see, dodged it, but the blow wasn't meant to hit him. It was a distraction. Suddenly, the Hulk leaped into the air, grabbing Homelander mid-flight and smashing him into the ground with bone-crushing force. Homelander struggled against the brute strength of the Hulk, but he couldn't overpower him. Thor, retrieving his hammer, charged in, lightning crackling as he struck Homelander repeatedly with bolts of energy. Homelander tried to retaliate with his laser vision, but the sheer force of Hulk's punches and Thor's lightning overwhelmed him. The fight lasted mere minutes, but to Homelander it felt like an eternity. His ego, always his greatest asset and weakness, had made him underestimate these Avengers. Eventually, he was beaten, pinned to the ground by the combined might of Hulk and Thor. Bloodied and bruised, Homelander glared up at them with hatred in his eyes. You think this is over, he spat. You think you've won? But before he could say more, Iron Man landed nearby, his suit whirring softly as he approached. We didn't win anything yet, Stark said, his voice calm but firm. But we will if you don't get in line. You're strong, sure, but strength isn't everything. Homelander stared at the offered hand, his pride wounded, his mind racing. For a moment, he thought about taking it, about biding his time, about showing them that he could be a team player. But deep down, he knew that wasn't who he was. He didn't want to be a part of the team. He wanted to lead it. He wanted to rule. Reluctantly, Homelander took Stark's hand and stood up, glaring at the Avengers around him. Fine, he muttered, though his mind was already plotting. He'd let them think they had him under control. He'd play the part of the hero for now, but he knew that soon they'd all see what real power looked like. In the days that followed, Homelander begrudgingly fought alongside the Avengers in smaller battles. They faced terrorist attacks and various other threats to Earth. Homelander's power was undeniable, and with every fight, the public grew more enamored with him. They began to praise him as a new Avenger, some even calling him the strongest of them all. But that wasn't enough for Homelander. The more the public adored him, the more he craved absolute control. He watched Thor and Hulk with envy, knowing they were the only ones who could rival his strength. He listened as Tony Stark gave orders, seething inside at the thought of being subordinate to a man in a suit.
Then came the night when everything changed. As the Avengers navigated the aftermath of their battle against the Chitauri in New York, Nick Fury grew increasingly concerned about Homelander's erratic behavior and godlike arrogance. Recognizing the potential threat, he discreetly tasked Black Widow with gathering more intelligence on the powerful newcomer. Natasha, with her expertise in espionage, began to shadow Homelander, using her skills to remain undetected. During her investigation, Natasha observed Homelander from a distance, witnessing firsthand the extent of his god complex. She watched as he single-handedly thwarted a robbery with unnecessary force, basking in the fear and reverence he instilled in those around him. He was about to smash the robber's head into the walls before he noticed the bystanders were recording the scene with their mobile phones. She documented these observations, but her mission took a risky turn when Homelander almost caught her in the act. Utilizing her quick thinking and training, Natasha narrowly escaped detection, reinforcing the need for caution in dealing with someone as powerful and unstable as Homelander. Reporting back to Fury, Natasha expressed her concerns about Homelander's potential as a volatile element within the team. Taking no chances, Fury instructed her to continue monitoring him, while also enlisting Tony Stark and Bruce Banner to analyze any potential weaknesses that Homelander might have. The two began delving into the science of Homelander's powers, seeking vulnerabilities that could be used to neutralize him if necessary. It was quiet in Avengers Tower. The team had just finished a mission, and most were resting or tinkering with equipment. Homelander, ever watchful, was standing on the balcony, staring out at the city below. His thoughts were consumed with the vision he'd seen from Loki's scepter. He could still feel its influence, whispering to him that he was meant for more, that he could be a god in this world. Suddenly, there was a flash of light from one of the labs below. Homelander turned, narrowing his eyes as he saw a figure emerge a new entity, one unlike anything he had encountered before, Ultron. Well, well, Ultron said, his metallic voice dripping with contempt. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Homelander frowned, stepping forward. And what the hell are you supposed to be? Ultron scanned him, his eyes glowing as he processed information. Interesting. You're not from this universe, are you? No. You're an anomaly. His tone shifted, becoming almost amused. A narcissist. A tyrant. I can see right through you. Homelander's fist clenched. Watch your mouth, Tin Can, before I melt you into scrap. But Ultron wasn't intimidated. If anything, he seemed intrigued. You want power, don't you? You want to be a god. But these Avengers, he gestured dismissively, they'll never let you rise above them. Homelander glared. What's your point? My point, Ultron continued, stepping closer, is that you and I are not so different. We both see the flaws in humanity. We both know that they are weak, incapable of ruling themselves. You want to lead them, and I want to evolve them. Homelander paused, listening carefully. His instincts told him to be wary, but Ultron's words were striking a chord deep within him. Go on, Ultron smirked. Imagine a world where the Avengers are no more, where you stand as the ultimate authority. No more gods, no more monsters, no more men in suits. Just you, ruling over humanity as their protector and their god. The idea was intoxicating. Homelander's mind raced with possibilities. He'd seen glimpses of this vision before, when he touched the Mind Stone. Now, Ultron was offering him a way to make it real. And how do you suppose I do that? Homelander asked, his voice low, dangerous. Ultron's smile widened. Simple. Let me handle the Avengers. You, in turn, focus on becoming the savior these people need. Once I've dealt with them, there will be no one left to stand in your way. 
Homelander considered the offer. On the surface, it seemed like a good plan. Let Ultron weaken the Avengers, then swoop in and take control. But deep down, he didn't trust Ultron. He'd seen what power-hungry maniacs could do, and Ultron was no different. Still, he was willing to play along for now. All right, Homelander said, stepping back. But remember this, I call the shots. Ultron chuckled darkly. Of course. After all, you're the hero, right? And that is going to be it for what if Homelander was in the MCU. Now, what do you think would have happened? What did you think of this take? And if you guys do enjoy these videos, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and turn those notifications on so you and your friends are all up to date with the latest content. And when I'm posting brand new What If episodes, I'm just very excited that we're finally doing these ones, and I'm very excited that I was finally able to do a boys crossover video. But that being said, like, what other crossovers would you like me to do? There's so many more that I have in store that I haven't done yet that will be coming to fruition, so you can kind of, you know, take a seat and just kind of wait a little bit. Make sure you have those notifications on. But again, thank you guys so so much for tuning in supporting the channel it really means a lot to me especially going to the patreon and going to the sub stack there's so many good perks and different exclusive content on both the different platforms so wherever you go it just really supports me making these videos and making them possible it really just goes a long way into like the editing production and everything else in between but again thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care and have a wonderful day. Peace out.